Hello everyone, welcome to episode 9 of the Daily Herbalist. Woo! 9 episodes. Um, today I want to talk to you all about vitamin C, or ascorbic acid. Now, this is some, a subject which is very sensitive. Um, I might be throwing myself under the bus with this one because a lot of the people in my industry, the natural health industry, the wellness industry, really like vitamin C, um, which is totally fine. You need to survive and to be healthy and for a lot of different parts of the body to function. However, in talking about vitamin C, I'm going to be talking today about the supplement of vitamin C, ascorbic acid, um, sometimes found as calcium ascorbate or sodium ascorbate. I'm not going to be talking about the um, vitamin C that we find in plants, fruits, vegetables. Um, now, it's cold and flu season here in New Zealand. Uh, we're experiencing a massive flu epidemic. The hospitals are chalk or block, everyone's sick, people getting stuck into their high doses of vitamin C. Um, and, you know, I just have to admit that after a number of years of being in this industry, I no longer actually recommend people to use vitamin C. I don't like vitamin C. Um, again, talking about the supplement here. Um, there's a lot of research coming out the last couple of years which shows that despite all the claimed health benefits and some of the very obvious health benefits which have been researched, there are also health risks. Um, the effects on vitamin C for the cold and flu, by the way, very mixed results may or may not have a preventative effect, may or may not have a, be able to treat the cold or the flu. Um, if there is an effect, it's probably mild. Um, it's probably going to affect people who are deficient in dietary vitamin C more than people who are already getting it through their diet. Um, the doses needed to treat will probably be very high as well. Now, um, the reason I don't tend to recommend it is also because um, of the health concerns of vitamin C. Number one, um, vitamin C supplements in some studies are associated with more inflammation in the body, not less. Um, vitamin C is associated with increased narrowing of the arteries, according to one study. Um, in another study, it showed that actually vitamin C might lead to cancer promotion, not um, cancer protection. Uh, which is really concerning because that's actually a really important reason that people use vitamin C as an antioxidant, protect their heart, protect their health, protect against cancer, treat against cancer. Um, there are clinics that use high mega mega doses of vitamin C um, for cancer. Um, and you know, it, that's a very specific treatment in a specific circumstance and might work really, really well. Um, but taking internal vitamin C supplements, as far as the body research goes, the jury is actually still out. And the reason for this is very specific. When you take a vitamin C supplement, ascorbic acid, sodium ascorbate, calcium ascorbate, you're not taking something that occurs in nature. Most vitamin C is made from corn. Now, they take the corn starch. Often this is going to be genetically modified corn because the majority of corn on the global market is and the cheapest corn. And vitamin C supplements are cheap. So they take the corn and they cook it at super, super high temperatures. Um, and they, it goes through lots and lots of processing. It goes through lots and lots of refining to get that um, ascorbic acid. So basically you are using a um, syn either synthetic or highly, highly processed chemical, um, which is very different to what you might be finding in your strawberries, um, in, your vid in your citrus fruit, in your onions, and that sort of thing. Um, really bears no resemblance. And vitamin C usually occurs in nature with other antioxidants and other compounds in a more complex relationship, which is not represented in supplements. Adding a few bioflavonoids in there, to me, it's just not enough. So uh, with ascorbic acid, um, what we're finding is it's hard on the gut, it's hard on the kidneys, um, it may or may not be pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory, it may depend on the dose, um, and it really isn't a natural product at all. And this really concerns me because some people are using vitamin C in big doses for years upon years upon years. Adding insult to injury, the majority of vitamin C products out there are chewable, fructose-laden, flavored uh, supplements. They may be naturally flavored or they may be artificially flavored. Most of the time they can contain fructose, which people think, oh, well, that's a fruit sugar. Well, Actually, no, again, we're dealing with a highly processed, refined um, chemical. It's not, uh, if it's fructose compared to sugar or sucrose, um, doesn't make it better. In fact, some states suggest that fructose may be even worse for us, especially very harmful to gut, harmful to gut microbes. 
Um, so I'm, as far as I'm concerned, chewable vitamin C tablets, mm-mm, bad news. Might look like it's naturally flavored and non-GMO and um, sweetened with fructose, which is natural fruit sugar, but uh, it's all labeling. It's all marketing. Companies are, are they're not trying to rip us off or hurt us. They try to do our best. And this is a constantly developing science. Um, some of these studies I've talked about, some of them are extremely recent. Um, so we're all learning. We're all moving with the times. But you know, if you come to my clinic, no, you're not going to get a vitamin C supplement. I much prefer you know, fruits, berries, oranges, red onions, um, and some herbs like rose hips. Good old rose hips. Those little red fruits left on roses after all the petals fall off. Um, those are edible. Those are medicinal. You can dry them, turn them into tea, make them into syrups and jams. Um, and the vitamin C, it's not... It's like, yeah. Vitamin C and rose hips, it's the highest, highest food source of vitamin C. Incredibly heat stable, so you can actually turn it into a honey based syrup and have, you know, every teaspoon a day. Or just make it into a sugar free tea and get your vitamin C that way. Studies show that works really well. And the effect of rose hips, clear cut, anti inflammatory, to the point it may even help inflammatory conditions like arthritis. There have been three studies on arthritis using rose hip extract, rose hip tea, and they work really, really well. So that's a much more natural, traditional way of getting our vitamin C, getting the vitamins and nutrients that we need. We can't trust companies, pharmaceutical companies, and a lot of supplement companies are owned by pharmaceutical companies. So you can't trust them to always do right by us. We have to take our own health into our own hands, sometimes doing the work ourselves in our kitchen. Um, so if you're getting your greens, and your berries, and your fresh fruits every day, you're probably getting more than enough vitamin C for your daily requirements. If you want something for inflammation, colds and flus, and that sort of thing, go as rose hip tea, trust me. And it is such a much more fun way of getting your vitamins. So that's my tip of the day. Stay happy, stay healthy, everyone. And um, enjoy your weekend. Bye.